Good morning and welcome to Let's Talk Tree. Happy New Year to you. I feel like it's been forever since we've been on. I know we've had some reruns and we had holidays. I've been out of town and I'm just excited to be back here with you. I have a cold, so that's why I sound a little funny and I may have to grab some tissue. But um, I'm excited what God's got planned for us today because He's so good to us. Life is going on all around us. He's given us this great word um, to lean on. And we're going to talk about that today. We're going to see how he's just weaved how he works in our lives through the scripture to give us understanding of how we can apply it to our own lives. And it's just going to be a blessing to you. I just know because it's been a blessing to me. But let's pray and get started. Father, we thank you so much for this day that you've given us. It's a mighty day, Lord. It's beautiful outside. And the weather is just astounding, Lord, and just a picture of your goodness and your glory through the light, Lord, and just, we can't thank you enough for allowing us to be in a relationship with you through Jesus Christ, Lord, whom we have everything that we ask, Lord, in his name. We thank you for this time. I pray that you be glorified and you just open our hearts to how we would apply it to our own personal journey in this thing we call life. We love and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And I go to Isaiah 50. And you know, I was thinking this morning on the way here that I don't know if I've ever offered this up or not, but you know, every week I ask you to open up your Bible and not even thinking that some people don't have Bibles. So if you're one of those and you op um, you want a Bible, you need a Bible, and you're willing to open it and read it and study with us, just email us and we will be happy to send you one or show you where to go pick it up because we don't want anyone not to have this free resource that God has given us um, to just encourage us and direct us and just give us everything we need to do life together here on this earth, okay? Uh, we thank the Lord for that. Isaiah 50. Now, I'm going to read it through. It's just, uh, you know, 11 verses and then we're going to talk about it. And when, we're, when I'm reading, I want you to hear some things because when you read the Old Testament, um, you're either going to get history, um, promises, uh, prophecy, uh, things that have happened, things that are going to happen, things that are happening. Um, and so when you read it, though, so especially in the prophets, you hear uh, sometimes a change of voice. And so the prophet is speaking as of speaking God's word, although we know all of Scripture is God's word. He breathed it, right? But he, just so you understand, don't get confused when you read it, because some people get intimidated by the Old Testament, but this will help a little bit. So you'll hear, like, the prophet speaking as if it was God speaking, and then you'll hear the prophet speaking, and then you'll hear, a, you know, the servant speaking. And now you know, in the Old Testament, primarily God is speaking to Israel, his people. And because of Jesus Christ, we have been grafted in, the branch has been grafted in, so Christians that were Gentiles are now grafted in, in so God can apply this scripture to our very lives even though we may not be Israeli okay so but in some things it's very contextual and very specific for them but for the most part when we read it and you see how God's work weed and and work through the life um, of his people you can picture that very same way of working through our lives that's what I love the most about the Old Testament you see a lot more of his ways how he works, and it gives you a picturesque understanding of how he does things. And that way, when life throws us um, lemons and we need some lemonade today, we can read this and understand he's at work. So I just want to kind of give you that heads up. So as we read this, you can kind of be picturing what is he saying and, and how, what's he doing, what's he promising um, through this, and it will give you encouragement for your day. Okay, Isaiah 50. Verse 1, beginning with that. Thus saith the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stinketh, because there is no water, and dieth for thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth their covering. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. 
The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God would help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Behold, all ye that kindle a fire, that compass yourselves about with sparks, walk in the light of your fire, and in the sparks that ye have kindled. This shall you have of mine hand. You shall lie down in sorrow. Do you hear the different voices that were spoken through this scripture? And it's just beautiful. And, and some of it may sound um, <laughs> non-relevant, and but we're going to talk about it and kind of make it a little more sense. And, um, and we'll have an understanding. But I hope even just already through that, you sensed um, some encouragement of how God works in people's lives, that he's always there. He's always there for us, okay? If we would just lend an ear to him and reach out, he's always there. And sometimes it does not feel like he's there. We wonder, where are you, God? Where are you in all this that's going on? And he constantly reminds us. And if we believe him for who he is and believe what his word says and not just take it lightly, really believe it, not just read it for knowledge, then it will really transform your heart and how you walk this thing out, this journey of life. Um, it will affect your every ounce of thought, uh, mentality, emotions, and those around you are watching and listening, and they will be affected also. So I pray that you will um, continue to study God's word. Let's start again in verse 1, and let's talk about it, okay? Thus saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. Now, I want to make a point here. Much of, um, <laughs> much of the scripture in the Old Testament, um, God is rebuking Israel, rebuking his people, okay? And because they've turned their own way constantly. He shows up in miraculous ways and does wonders all throughout time. And, and, and like us, we are so guilty sometimes too. We turn away and lean on other things, other people, other gods, and things like that, um, which is not what he's <laughs> desiring of us. So when he asked this, thus, thus at the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? He's making a point here. He has not divorced his people. God has not left his people, okay? They have nothing to show that he's left his people, okay? And he's saying here, where you've gone in your iniquities is on you. You have done this, okay? You have done this. And just like his people then, some of us are out there feeling like God is far away, feel like he's left us, and he has not left us. We have left him. Not me, but some people have, okay? We have gone our own way, okay? Uh, like sheep astray is what the scriptures say in the New Testament in some of the passages. And, and that's what it is. God does not have a piece of paper that says, I have left you, okay? This is the point he's making here in this passage to his people. And it was your own iniquities that have driven away, okay? Iniquities separate us from the Lord, but he's still there. It's not final. You know, divorce papers, I've never been divorced, thank the Lord, by His grace. I can only say that because marriage is hard, right? But the paper, the divorcing papers, is finalization. See, with God, there is no finalization. He is always, even when it feels like He's apart and we're separated, He, there's no final divorce, but He is ready for us. Ready, ready, ready. Verse 2, Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stinketh because there is no water, and die for thirst. 
Do you hear this? The Lord is reminding his people, reminding us of what he has done, what he can do. He did dry up the sea to the ancestors of Israel. And some of you have seen things he's worked in um, your lives as well. But listen, he says, as my hand shortened, can I not redeem? See, he's making a point here that he can redeem anything, anyone, any situation, no matter how far. It seems you've gone astray, no matter how dark it seems all around you. He has the power to deliver. He has the heart and the readiness to redeem. And he's saying, hey, I've called. Where are you? Where are you? I'm ready to redeem. My hand is not shortened. And, and where are you? See, God is willing and able if we would be so, okay? And listen, I don't know about you, and, and I think this is one thing um, I thought for sure would be in the Psalms today because I've seen so much affliction in just the last two weeks. Now I see affliction on a regular basis. I'm in the mission field, so there's always stuff I, God has just given me to see because I, I see it. And I'm not mission when you teach, it's better when you have life experiences to go along with it so you can make the Word come alive more through what God is showing you and, and doing through you, right? And so for me, it helps too. But anyways, just in two weeks, okay, just in the last two weeks, a friend of mine's husband died suddenly, okay? A friend of mine was murdered. Two people have called me who are suicidal. Um, another two people have called me um, needing counsel. Um, and this is outside of the mission field, let me just tell you, okay? This is not to mention the people in the mission field. Um, one person has contacted me. They have suicidal thoughts five times a week. They don't desire to hurt themselves, but there's thoughts coming their way. Uh, my aunt died last week. Uh, my house caught on fire Sunday, okay? So this is just in a matter of two weeks' time or less, on half of that, right, that I, in my little circle, my little circle that I'm seeing going on, and that's just me. I'm one person, and you and however many are out there are watching and listening today, and then not to mention all the rest of the people in just our community, Montgomery, Alabama, and then the River Region and, and wherever else. Imagine each one person have that many things going on in their circle of influence. Life is hard, and there's darkness, and we need to know that. Who is God that he would not redeem? Who is God that he does not have the power to deliver? And see, if I'm not remembering that, I pretty much could drown in all that I get to see, okay? And you too. And some of you are drowning right now. It's too much. If you turn on the TV alone, I can't even watch the news. Oh, the yang yang, the negative stuff, it drives me insane. But there's nothing but beaten up, beaten down, negative stuff, and not to mention the real things, real world things that are going on. They're dark. It's just darkness. And we need to be reminded that God has the power to deliver. He delivered his people through waters, like a whole entire sea. He parted it for them to walk through. Okay, really did happen. It really didn't happen. You think you'd write it if it didn't happen? I believe that. I've seen them transform my life. I've seen them taking a homeless drug addict into a home and a work and a, a fruitful, productive life. I've seen him work in lives. And if all this is going on around me and whatever's going on around you, do you think not that he would do that for you? Because guess what? The reason you are here is because he decided that you need to be on this earth today. He decided that you had a purpose. He decided he wanted to do something with you. So no matter how dark, and just weighty life gets around you, just remember that you are living and breathing because he purposed it. And we have a real enemy that is coming hard against it, okay? And if we will rely on the Lord and listen to him, and he's calling out, and he's saying here, he's got the power to deliver, and he does, and he gives an example. Verse 3, I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth their covering. Do you know what he's saying here? Sackcloth is what his people um, put on them in mourning, in mourning. He is telling us that the heavens are mourning. You and I mourn. We see what we see and we uh, experience what we're experiencing. And we're mourning. Guess what? <laughs> They're mourning too. It's telling us that. What a comfort. We're not alone in our mourning. And if you're in a, a, a healthy faith family, a healthy body of Christ, guess what? Your brothers and sisters are mourning with you. I, I have a sweet um, faith community that I visit so often. This is my home church, so I'm here primarily, but um, I do like to visit there because they're very close-knit, healthy faith community, much like the early church. And so 
And it's beautiful to watch every time there's something rejoicing or, or um, devastating. They are doing it all together, just like the scripture says, right? And if you're in a small group because you're in a big church, y'all experience that. And so guess what? The heavens are mourning also, just as we're mourning down here, whatever's going on, or rejoicing, whatever the case may be. But in this situation, we're seeing uh, where there's a need for redemption and delivery, and there's mourning in heaven, okay? Verse 4, the Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. Do you hear that? He just got through showing us um, about our need for de uh, delivery and redemption and how he's done that in years past and how the heavens are dark. Now he's showing us how to have understanding in this. You know, in the Proverbs it says, with all you're getting, get understanding with all of it. And some people say, well, you know, the Bible says, my ways are not your ways, okay? And, um, and the Lord does say that, and that's true. We cannot even, we think, oh my goodness, I was rebuked by the Lord um, this holiday season. I totally pegged something wrong, a whole situation, a whole person wrong, and I just mourned over my lack of understanding. And it taught me that I really need to listen to the Holy Spirit if I open my mouth. I just have to, and I do it faithfully when things like this, because I definitely don't want to teach something in air, because that's a bad thing in the Lord's eyes, and it's bad for the community. So I listen to the Lord on things like this, and I try to listen to the Lord the best I can, but sometimes when things are so close to home, you just kind of respond, you know, and the Lord just showed me, and, and it was horrible, um, but he's merciful, so it wasn't like a great um, long journey of pain, and there was no condemnation because of Christ Jesus in my life, but there was a rebuke and an awareness and a, and a joy of the mercy that he gave me, and um, because he gave understanding in a situation, I lacked understanding, and because I lacked understanding, I judged something incorrectly, and many of us, especially the righteous, the religious, his we know, we know, we know that Jesus, when he came, that was such the, the stumbling block was the righteous, self-righteous, the religious. It's so easy to be that person, to be that person that is lacking some understanding from the Lord. But see here it says in verse 4, all this darkness, the Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned. He gives it. If we would so listen, he wakeneth morning by morning. I, he loves to wake us in the morning. And if we was to just get up when he wakes us up and listen to what he's got to say when there's nothing else going on around, you would be amazed at the things he would tell you. He waketh mine ear to hear as the learn. We need to be ready to let him speak to us, to listen, okay? Our ears need to be hearing as the learn. He's an as the learn. You hear that? As the learn. Not because we have arrived and we are the learn. He goes, as the learn because God by his Holy Spirit will speak into you remember in the disciples the religious people were like these are unlearned men how do they know all this right and do these things but the Holy Spirit the power of God through the Holy Spirit the power of God that parted the Red Sea that lifts up dead people the same Holy Spirit gives understanding if you want it I'm telling you some of us need some understanding because we will just muddle in our life situations way too long okay way too long and the Lord wants to give you understanding he wants your ear to hear as the learn and he can do it and he's desiring to do that okay verse 5 the Lord God hath opened my ear and I was not rebellious neither turned away back you hear that that's the thing. He's ready to give understanding, but some of us are too busy. We don't want to hear. We'll, we'll read a prayer out of a prayer book, or maybe we'll pray, okay, and then we'll, we'll read the Bible. Maybe we'll read a Bible. Maybe we're reading our Bible each day, and we check it off the list, and then we go on about our day, and everything else is on our mind is listen to the people that we're responsible to or with, our coworkers, whatever it is, but... He wants us to hear, not to turn away. So after we pray, speaking to him, and when we read the scripture, we need to sit quietly a minute and listen to what he wants to tell us about it. Okay? He wants to talk to us, tell us stuff, to give us understanding. And I'm telling you, when you get filled up with that, whatever life brings you and hits you with, you can handle it. You can handle it. I promise. I've seen it. 
And the people, I've watched people, their downfall, um, people in ministry, they just go straight down the drain when this is not happening. I've seen, I even, God gave me a word to warn someone in another country uh, that was going to happen, and it did. It did happen. But we get rebellious. We think, well, now we got our thing that we're doing, and we're going to do it our way. I've been taught, I've been educated, whatever the case may be. We just do our thing. But he has something to tell us, and his ways are not our ways. We're going to do things different than he would have unless we would commit that work. He says, commit your work to him, and he will establish your thoughts which gives you understanding. Verse 6, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Okay, you see a picture here of um, adversaries, okay? We have a real adversary. Some of you think it's people. Some of you think it's your boss or your coworker or your family member. Oh, no, no, no. Our real adversary is Satan himself. Powers and principalities is what the scripture says in Ephesians 6, that we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, okay? In today's time, we wrestle with powers and principalities that we cannot see. Now, some of us have been um, given the opportunity to see, and I'm so thankful for that um, visually, but the most of us, we can't see it, but it really is going on. He told us that, okay? So you see a picture of adversaries here. Verse 7, listen to this. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. You hear this? The Lord God will help me. When you feel like there's no help, you feel helpless, hopeless, and all those things around you, like, I mean, all that stuff I just shared with you that I've experienced just in the last two weeks, close to home, folks, okay? Um, God is our helper. Okay, He is our helper. We need to go to Him when all this adversity is going on around us and afflictions and sufferings but this says I have set my face like a flint I love this okay flint the Hebrew word for flint is shalamish or kalamish I can't remember now I should have wrote the little pronunciation but kalamish and it means um, in the sense of hardness like a rock like a rock okay we need to be like this servant of the Lord, believing that God will help us and not be confounded no matter what goes on, what people say, do around you, whatever, and set our face like a rock. You know when I picture that rock, hardness, a rock is not moving unless somebody picks it up, right? They're just, it's hard, it's heavy, and it's still, okay? We need to set our face like a rock. A flint is what it says here. I've set my face like a flint. And so if we just take that away today, put your face on Jesus. Jesus, everything Jesus. Speak the word of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. And, 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 and don't move it. Rock. Hardness. You know, not movable. Not movable. The minute we move it uh, is when we see, feel, respond a whole different way. Our eyes, our face set on Jesus. Okay? Verse 8, he is near that justifieth me, who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. See, the adversary can come near to you all you want to. All he, you don't want him to, but all he wants to, because your face is set like a flint, like a rock, steady, still, hard, there, ready, right? So no matter what comes your way, you're ready. Okay, you're ready, ready, ready. That's what he's saying here. Verse 9. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Here it is again, believing this, okay? Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Yep, that's what happens to the adversaries. It really does. It ain't for us to be thinking and choosing about people by no means, okay? That's not our job to be thinking negative things. But the Lord is showing us that the adversary and his works and his worker bees, there's no hope for them. Okay, those that are truly from Satan himself. Okay, there's no hope. Now, um, there are people that are dark that may be in our lives that there is great hope because God wants to redeem them. And, and the, the best use of uh, that and partaking of that redemption plan is for us to love very well in the midst of adversity, in the midst of our adversaries coming away. 
God's business to do what he's going to do, when he wants to do it, to who he's going to do it, how he's going to do it. It's not our business to know who that is. Our business is to love everyone, especially the ones that can't love us back, especially the ones that hate us. That is the key. The Lord wants us to be loving them, okay? So when all this is going on around you and the adversity is here, your job is to love them, not to be considered, you're going to get eaten like a moth. No, 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 no. That's quite contrary because you read the scriptures together, the Old Testament and the New Testament, and then you understand. You don't say, well, this is what it says. No, the whole scripture is true together, okay? We don't say, hmm, you're going to be eating like a moth. We just trust that God's going to do what he's going to do, who's going to do it, whoever that may be, but we love through it, okay? Verse 10, who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. See, it may feel like you're walking in the midst of so much darkness around you. I, somebody I spoke to this week, she was so gloomy. She goes, you know, and she didn't even know all the stuff that I just shared with you about the stuff. But what she had been seeing over the last week even was just pure darkness. She goes, I'm just blue. Everything, I, everywhere I look, darkness. The TV, darkness. It, darkness is everywhere everywhere and so people are affected by this but here it says when you have no light you see no light okay let him trust in the Lord he says trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God stay here stay upon his God verse 11 behold all you that kindle a fire that compass yourselves about with sparks walk in the light of your fire and in the sparks that you have kindled this shall you have of mine hand. You shall lie down in sorrow. And that is, that's what's going to happen to them. We don't know who they are. Only God knows the heart of man. He knows who's going to be kindled like a fire and, and lie down in sorrow. He knows that. We don't know that. Nor should we try to think that we know that. Because if we for one minute think that, then we're going to lack the, the concern for the heart of man. So God's put his heart in us, those who are Christian, those who have been saved by the grace of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. He has put a new heart, a new heart that is concerned with the heart of other people. That's why people will always come first for the Christian people before places, before projects, before paper, before busyness, because God has put his heart in us to care for the heart of others. Love, hope for eternity, the gospel of Christ, whatever it is that God's placed in our circle to be representatives, ambassadors of Jesus Christ while people are living and breathing. Because as you can hear, and as you probably know in your own world, there is a lot of darkness and there's a lot of hurt, and no one is um, excluded. It's anybody. You, me, regular folk, church folk, everybody. Nobody's excluded. So I pray that it's been a blessing. I pray that you'll rely on the word. Um, this 2017, make it your goal. Lord, we thank you so much for your word, your love, your truth. We thank you that we have hope in you and you alone, and nothing can come against us because you, Jesus Christ. We love and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.